put him on pause. But Sean Paul up and running with Live and Living. Hi, I'm Debbie. Tonight, we tap into our archives. Up first, he's been streaming strong with a string of high-profile international collabs. But Sean Paul in full dancehall mode on his seventh studio album featuring a host of local lights. We love it when you say it twist it and turn. Never mind the billion plus streams. Superstar status sitting lightly on Sean Paul's shoulders. He's easygoing and expansive as he talks about the new stuff. Dancehall front and center on Live and Living. His seventh studio album, an homage to his 90s roots, that also nets a flock of features. From high flying newcomers such as Skilly Bang and Intense to pillars of the dancehall establishment like Bujabanton Banton and Damian Marley. Someone up there, sir, Lancelot, but not me. Live and Living also build as collaboration over confrontation. A lot of our highest streaming artists never clashed at all. Myself, Shaggy, Kaffee, and Charlie Blacks, people like Egyptian. Serrani, they all got on major radio stations and if you are an artist and you understand what it is to be on a playlist, you know, Elephant Man, I, I don't remember big clashes with any of those artists I've mentioned, maybe one or two scuffles here and there, but it wasn't the main focus of their career. Uh, other artists who have done that, I don't see them streaming as much. It brings people to look at it, but does it bring them to buy, which is essentially what we are trying to do to, to, to you know, keep this whole thing going. You can still go hard, you can still uh, represent yourself and, and, and go uh, very deep with your lyrics and very potent without being derogatory, calling other people mother names, calling the kids names. This is what our clash has gone to now. And lately I've just been very tired of it. Sean Paul also pushing back against the notion of dancehall in decline. Despite few signs of successes showing any of the commercial clout displayed by himself, Shabba Ranks and Shaggy over several decades. COVID a creativity killer in the first months of the pandemic until a return to productivity yielded not one, but two albums worth of new material. I literally counted the amount of time from February till about July. It was about 20 odd times that I'd left my house. Um, just fear and, you know, I have asthma and just kind of watching all the news reports and conspiracy theories and just kind of trying to take it all in. And a virgin of my own junior gang, who's on the album, said to me perfectly, he said, bro, I don't feel like doing nothing either. I don't feel like saying anything either because you can't listen and talk at the same time. So there was nothing for a while. So, but, so, but for me, cause trouble for me. Is this about pride for you? Sort of asserting your roots in the business? Yeah, it's about taking part in the history of the music. Uh, you know, this music that I love uh, put me on the map, took me to certain places. The, the, the producers, you know, Steely and Cleavy, Sly and Robbie, uh, people like Bobby Digital, Tony Kelly, uh, all of these people kind of, from just even teaching me, put me where I am. And now people call me, you know, this, this legend or this, this global ambassador for the music. And when I hear people say, oh, the genre is dead because of the numbers, this is my answer to it. We're here, we're live and living, check the pulse. Very dope MCs, very dope lyricists on the album and something to be proud of, for me, at least. Live and Living is pretty crammed with features. Yeah, man, 15 features on one single song, Lionheart. Lionheart is actually the song that started everything off. So from my band, them should have known me dangerous. Lionheart, that's just another name for us. For us to work together brings back our energy and our, our focus as to dance hall itself, you know what I mean? And speaking to Bujo, speaking to Junior Gang, speaking to Shaggy over the years, it comes up in conversation often. We, we don't do enough collabs uh, as a genre. We've seen reggaeton do it, we've seen other genres do it, especially the more urban types of music, and it works, you know what I mean? And I, for one, collaborate with many people all over the world. So for me, it was just like a, 
I'm home now. I'm not touring six months out of the year. Uh, I'm gonna make use of the time and, and, and do what I can with the people who I rate. Collabs with me and Mr. Vegas took me to, to where I am. You understand? And so I've done collab collabs with me and Sasha took me to where I am now. So I, I really have the belief in the music, I have the belief in the artists out here. And that's enough for me. The youngsters in Jamaica seem to be trying to craft a new sound, but it seems to be falling on deaf ears internationally. What is that new sound and why isn't it crossing over like say, give me the light, is it too late? Has the business changed too much? The business, I mean, music is, is a, a cycle. There's 12 notes and they repeat themselves on the piano. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and it starts again, and then it goes up, right? So, for me, there'll always be trends, just like the great Boga says, style of style and can't spoil. It will go around. For me, I don't personally like calling this new sound trap dancer. More I call it the new sound of dancer, and it's represented on the album. Live and living. Lyrics master out bad to physical to if I link so with them brothers. And those songs kind of reflect what they're calling trap sound. But with every rhythm that I pick like that, I make sure I can hear the dancehall root in it, the reggae root in it, for me. So the youngsters will stream well because they are the new faces, they're the represent the new energy, but they're not crossing over to that wider market, which is what you did with tracks like Gimme the Light. But people like myself have been saying it for years, you know, the sound is changing. Shabarangs had had to blend this sound back in the in the early days to get on radio, so they chug it. And that broke open a big market in terms of other people wanting to hear more things that sound like that, and that gave way to me, Tanta the Vanted, Beanie Man, and a host of others, Sham. All of these people that got signed, Elephant Man, all of us got signed, and, and, and a big record company kind of believed in what we did because the sound was working. R. Kelly went and did it. Wine for me, wine for me. Missy went and did it. What them do, them road bad man. Bad man. Them no want me shook bad man. Beyonce went and did it. Baby boy, you stay on my mind. A bag of people are doing that sound and we are like, we want to move away, but it's generational to me. We went very far. Uh, I'm still going. How can we get the youth them to understand that without chastising them? And so for me, it is to work with them and show them by, by a little way, say, yo, you see this track where you pick? It's, just, it's the trappy thing where you like, but it also has many elements that bring you back to the root of what dancehall is. Pay attention to that kid. So we use the trap drums to beat those rhythms, but we play it in a more dancehall way. What happens since computers kind of pop up and everybody's producing their own self, uh, is that they're just going with a sound where a lot of it is like, it sounds good and it sounds right, but it is not the formula that people heard and started to love from us. Now we've all of a sudden kind of abandoned it and everybody's like, ah, well, B-Boy is like, I love island music. And then they can call up Jamaica in, or he doesn't even call up dancehall music. Work, 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 work. Big up to Rihanna, she's the only one that says, I'm making a dancehall album. That's the next thing. Some of the younger artists actually sound better on these trap rhythms. If you give them a bossy track or something like that, they don't really know what to say on it. So Give me some names. I don't really, I don't really like using names. Yeah, man, come on. Who I, sounds who, really good on a trap rhythm? Who sounds really good on a trap rhythm? Gage, Skilly Bang, all these guys are doing things that sound great on there. Ask them to DJ on a regular dance or rhythm, they're gonna have to dig deep to try. People like Massacre does it effortlessly. Boop. Me hear some clown a chat. Tell them set me for your own a chat. Don't mock up. People are run phone a job. Big baller for your net a bus a job. I, I rate him for that. You understand? I've seen him go on a trap dancehall type of track and I've seen him go on a dancehall track and him sound very dope on the boat. Of Generationally, he's at a different place. So he's, he's, more, he's more sort of caught in the middle of two periods. True. But so am I. And it's evident on the album. Some of the tracks are traditional. Some of them are more to that sound that you're talking about. And I still don't want to call it trap dancer. Because you know why, Anthony? I fought for dancer music. There's many, many stories that I could sit down and tell you how much time he fight with radio executives over there about why not put in Baby Sham um, song, which is huge in the diaspora, and sell enough records for that record label. Why not put in it on the playlist? 
There's many times I've done that. So for me, for, for a younger generation now to come and say, well, I trap dance all it name. And to me, it's like, no, I dance all it name, but at the same time, can't burn them out. We just have to lead by example and teach them in a way that I am able to. You really own none of those masters from the early days? No, but uh, there, there's a loophole that can be done. Uh, you can re-record your, your, your thing there. You know what I mean? Taylor Swift has, she has gone after getting back her material that somebody else owns in, I guess, precisely the same way you're describing. Yeah, you can. Re-recording your material. You can re-record them and, and, and... You plan to do that? There has been a plan for quite a few years to do it, you know. But again, I'm just kind of looking towards the future. So for me, um, you know, there is so much more injustice that has happened to our artists and our producers in the past that what happened to me wasn't... It's not really a big deal. Uh, yes, I feel I must own my music. I feel that that is a legacy that my kids will, will, will be able to benefit from. When you look at the times that is changing, you just have to just move with them, bro, and, and, and try not to live in the past. So I really would like to record them over again. But at the same time, I, I'm trying to get a hit just as potent. So that's what my main focus is on. And no, nowadays, I own these records. I, I, I kind of lease them to... to um, to Island Records and that was a deal that they gave me. Sometimes these companies play hardball because they want to own everything. So they probably won't do that with a younger artist. But now I'm established and I was able to negotiate that. Um, I would say to a younger artist, don't afraid of the VP, don't afraid of the, the smaller distributors that will give you something now because that's a stepping stone. So there's no bitterness on your part towards VP or Atlantic? I, it's my voice as long as I still have my voice and I can you know, sing the song for people and they enjoy it. That, that's the thing, I did sign that contract. I know what I was signing. And at that time, there was no better option for me to get my work out there. And I always thought, well, this is a big song, but we can make bigger song, which I have done. I mean, the song with me and Sia went to number one. It wasn't my song. But it was the first time she went to number one. So that's an indication or that is the, just uh, 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 telling you that you don't have to just always rely on those things. You can move on, you can do your thing. For me, once you have life, that's the greatest thing. Violence in music, Shensia and coffee and street cred. Does he still wish he had it? Our chat with Sean Paul continues next Friday. It's about time that we just big up more of the positive things who uh, continue with a negative attitude towards each other. It's been 40 years, and there's been few of us that's gone through, and other people that have been taking that same original sound and having very great success off of it. So you decide. Yeah.